Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. A couple of weeks ago, I looked at the LLVM compilation toolchain and mentioned that the internal intermediate representation it uses is static single assignment or SSA. So today I wanted to loop back and look at the paper that first proposed SSA. This was published back in 1988 and the title mentions global value numbers which is going to make sense once we see how SSA is defined and also redundant computations because that really is one of the key goals of any intermediate representation to optimize away all redundant computations within your code. Now one simple approach to identifying redundant computations is to look for two expressions that are lexically identical. In other words, that are written out the same way. But that won't necessarily get rid of all the redundant computations within your program. And that's really what SSA is trying to get at. What SSA does is assign symbolic names, and that's what the authors call value numbers, to expressions. And that is done in such a way that if those value numbers are identical, even if the expressions from which they were computed are different. They are guaranteed to compute the same value and so one of them can be optimized away. And the interesting thing is that like many compiler optimizations there is a ripple on effect which happens once you identify that two expressions compute the same value. Once you optimize one of those away you can then discover other computations that are equivalent. Now the paper obviously goes into the detailed algorithm for computing SSA form and for how to perform various optimizations on it. But what I wanted to do today was go through a really illuminating example that the authors have in the paper. And that example describes both how SSA is computed and also how to do a broad range of optimizations on that SSA representation. So the example looks at this simple snippet of a program, which is a loop, as you can see from this backward jump. And within the loop, there is an if statement which goes into these two branches and you come out of your if then branch and there's some computation after it and then you loop back to the header of the loop. And the input to this piece of code consists of all these variables a, b, c, d, l, m, s, t and then there's some computation that's happening within the loop. So that's the original program. Now if you look at it closely you can intuit several opportunities for optimization. The first one you'll notice is this computation of A into B that is assigned to X. And you'll see that there are actually two optimizations that can be done over here. The first one is because of these various assignments. So you can see that A is assigned to C over here. So this expression really is the same as A into B and the same is happening in the other branch of the if statement. So you could move this assignment out altogether and then you will also notice that the value of that multiplication has nothing to do with computations inside the loop and so actually you can move it outside the loop altogether. You can do a similar optimization with this assignment of x plus 1 to y and actually move it into the branches. And you'll see how this resulting code snippet is optimized in terms of getting rid of all the redundant computations which were repeated in this initial piece of code. Right, so let's work through this example. On the left, you see the original code snippet. And on the right, we see the first translation of that snippet into SSA form. And this demonstrates the two crucial ideas that define SSA. The first one is that every variable in this intermediate representation is assigned only once. 
and since this is done statically at compile time that's what gives it the name static single assignment now if you have a variable x and it's assigned to several times we just give it numerically increasing subscripts x1 x2 and so on but this definitional property is crucial to ssa because when you see a variable in SSA form, you know that it could only have been defined in one other place. You don't need to disambiguate multiple assignments to the same variable. And as a consequence of this single assignment rule, we need to do something a bit more special when we have control flow joining at one place. And we handle that using this special phi operator. The meaning of this phi operator is that it evaluates to its first argument if control reaches it via the left branch immediately preceding it and to its second argument if control reaches it via the right branch immediately preceding it. So for example, if you look at this assignment, A4 equals phi of a3, A2. If you took the left branch of the if, A4 is assigned A3, and if you took the right branch, A4 will be assigned to A2. The other thing we need to keep track of are the ranks of expressions, and those are these numbers that you see in the brackets next to these expressions. And essentially, the rank is the depth of that corresponding expression in the expression tree. So if you write out an expression as its syntax tree, the leaves are going to have rank zero, the ones above it rank one and so on. To take a concrete example, if you have the expression x multiplied by y, x and y are simply input variables, so they themselves will have rank zero. But the expression x multiplied by y is going to have rank 1 because it depends on two other expressions or two other variables of rank 0 and so on. Now when you look at this SSA representation on the right half of the screen, you should get some inkling of the first simplest optimization that you could do right away. And that is with these trivial assignments where one SSA variable is directly assigned to another one. So we have one over here where D3 is ass assigned to C1 and another one here where A3 is assigned to C1. And when you have trivial assignments like these, you can straight away eliminate them and simply substitute one of these variables for the other one that it was assigned to throughout the entire program. And so that's what we've done in this next iteration. So we see the SSA form from our first iteration on the left, and then its next iteration where we have simply removed trivial assignments on the right. We removed A3 and substituted it with C1 over here, and we also removed D3 and substituted it with C1 over here in the assignment to D4. Now we come to the next phase of eliminating redundant computations, and that is looping over ranks. So remember that back in the very first computation of the SSA form, we also computed the rank of each expression. And that's what we're going to start using right now. We start by looking at the reverse topological sort of all the nodes or basic blocks in our representation. And in this case, we will turn our attention to this assignment of x1 to a4 multiplied by b1 because it is the lowest ranked computation within the last node in topological sort order. And the way we try to identify redundant computations is by actually trying to push this computation back through the nodes in the program. And in doing so, we may discover other places where that same computation is done and then eliminate one of them. So to look at this concrete example, we're multiplying A4 by B1. If we push it back up through the two branches of this if, we will introduce 
two new variables c1 and c2 and perform the equivalent computation in each branch. Notice that a4 here is the result of a phi statement between c1 and a2. So when we go up the left branch instead of a4 we will use c1 and when we go up the right branch instead of a4 we will use a2. And now as soon as we do this we will notice that there are two computations with identical operands and operations. So we see c1 into b1 here and here and on the right side of the branch we see a2 into b1 in these two places. And when we see that we can right away substitute the right hand side of these two new variables that we've added by the result of those computations. So z1 simply is assigned L3 and z2 is simply assigned S3. So since the two of those were trivial assignments, we can drop them right away. We can also copy the computation C1 into B1 out to just before the if statement to the loop header. And we can do this because this computation is identical on both branches. And then you take the next step and note that the computation C1 into B1 doesn't even need to be inside the loop because it is not dependent on any value changing while it is inside the loop. And so you can hoist that by introducing a new variable Z4 and move it outside the loop over here. And at the end of this process, what we've done is moved all the rank one computations to their earliest possible locations. And now that we've done this, we can look for all the redundancies that we found as a result and start eliminating them. So for example, Z3 over here is simply the same as Z4 because it's computing C1 into B1. And then moving down further, this assignment of L3 as well as this assignment of L4 can also be eliminated and you could simply read that value from z3. And when you come out here to after the if statement, you can see that the value of x1 can simply be replaced by the value of c5. And now since you've eliminated a bunch of these computations, you're left with a lot of trivial assignments, which as we saw, can be very easily removed. And now that we've worked through all the rank 1 computations, we can look at the next rank. And in this case, it's this assignment of y1 to x1 plus 1. And when we do a similar exercise with that computation, which is to copy it upwards through the two branches, just like we did for this example, we will find a few other redundancies, especially on the right branch over here, we simply notice that the value is the same as T3. And so we replace that with a trivial assignment. And finally, when you're done with this iterative process of looking at each rank, moving the computation upwards while keeping the semantics unchanged, and then eliminating redundancies, at the end of that entire process, we return the program back to its conventional form where assignments can happen multiple times to each variable and when we do that we will end up with this optimized program from our example. So that was a quick look at static single assignment form and hopefully working through this example from the paper gave you a bit of a flavor for not just what SSA is and how it works but the kinds of optimizations that it very naturally is able to express. Now, I strongly encourage you to read the whole paper if you're interested in the algorithmic details of how all these optimizations are done, how SSA form is computed, and so on. But hopefully working through this example gave you an idea of how that would work. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.